Today we're going to talk about some of the wildest GTA theories, some you probably never heard before. Let's start. Did Nico Bellic actually ruin Roman's life? To start, let's recap who these characters are for those who might need a refresher. Nico Bellic is our protagonist, an Eastern European immigrant who comes to Liberty City seeking the American dream. Roman Bellic is Nico's cousin who's been living in Liberty City for a while and constantly brags about his success to Nico back home. Now, the theory goes that Nico's arrival in Liberty City marks the beginning of Roman's downfall. When Nico arrives, he quickly discovers that Roman has been lying about his success. Instead of a mansion and sports cars, Roman lives in a tiny apartment and runs a small taxi business. Some argue that Nico's presence forces Roman to face reality, stripping away the fantasy life he had constructed. Almost immediately after Nico shows up, Roman starts getting into dangerous situations. He gets kidnapped by Albanian loan sharks, his apartment and taxi depot get burned down, and he's constantly at risk due to Nico's criminal activities. The theory suggests that Roman's life was relatively stable, if not glamorous, before Nico arrived. As a result of Nico's actions, Roman has to leave his familiar surroundings in Broker and move to Bohan. This disrupts his business and personal life, potentially setting him back financially and emotionally. Throughout the game, we see Roman struggle with a gambling addiction. Some theorists argue that the stress of Nico's presence and the dangerous situations they find themselves in exacerbate Roman's gambling problem. Roman starts the game as a generally cheerful, optimistic character. As the story progresses and he experiences more trauma, he becomes more cynical and hardened. The theory posits that Nico's influence led to this change in Roman's personality. But hold up. Let's not jump to conclusions just yet. There are some strong counter-arguments to this theory. Roman was already in debt to loan sharks before Nico arrived. His gambling problem and tendency to lie about his success were also pre-existing issues. Nico didn't cause these problems. He just exposed them. While Nico's presence does bring some danger, he also protects Roman multiple times throughout the game. Without Nico, Roman might have ended up seriously hurt or killed by the loan sharks. Thanks to Nico's help, Roman's taxi business actually expands. By the end of the game, Roman is genuinely successful, living in a nice apartment in Algonquin with his new wife. This is a far cry from his initial squalid living conditions. Although Roman does face hardships, he also grows as a person. He becomes more honest, faces his gambling addiction, and even finds love with Mallory. It's debatable whether this personal growth would have happened without the events set in motion by Nico's arrival. So, what's the verdict? Did Nico Bellic ruin Roman's life? After carefully considering all the evidence, I'm going to say, no. While Nico's arrival certainly shook up Roman's life and brought some serious challenges, it also catalyzed positive changes. Roman ended up in a better place financially, emotionally, and personally by the end of the game. The hardships he faced helped him grow as a person and ultimately led to genuine success and happiness. It's also worth noting that many of Roman's problems were of his own making. Nico's presence forced Roman to confront these issues rather than continue living in denial. In many ways, Nico acted as a reality check that Roman desperately needed. Next theory, this time focusing on Claude, the silent protagonist from GTA 3. The theory suggests that Claude can't speak due to a traumatic event in his past, possibly involving gangs ripping out his tongue. It's a wild one, but let's break it down and see if it holds any water. First off, let's consider Claude's character. Throughout GTA 3, Claude never utters a single word. He's the ultimate silent protagonist, communicating only through actions and occasional nods. This silence has led to a lot of speculation among fans over the years. Now the theory proposes that Claude's muteness isn't just a game design choice, but actually has a dark backstory. The idea is that Claude was involved in some serious gang business before the events of GTA 3 and things went south. Either he witnessed something so traumatic that he was psychologically unable to speak afterward, or more gruesomely, a rival gang punished him by cutting out his tongue. This theory tries to explain a few things about Claude's character. First. It gives a reason for his silence beyond just being a silent protagonist trope. Second, 
It potentially explains Claude's apparent ruthlessness and lack of hesitation in carrying out violent acts. If he'd been through such a traumatic experience, it could have left him emotionally scarred and potentially unstable. The theory also ties into Claude's mysterious past. We know very little about what he did before the events of GTA 3, so there's plenty of room for speculation. The idea that he has a dark, violent history in the criminal underworld fits with the overall tone of the game and Claude's apparent comfort with the criminal lifestyle. However, there are some pretty big holes in this theory. For one, if Claude had his tongue cut out, it would likely be noticeable to other characters. Yet nobody in the game ever mentions or reacts to Claude being unable to speak. They just seem to accept his silence as normal. Moreover, the trauma angle doesn't quite fit with Claude's demeanor. While he's certainly capable of violence, he doesn't come across as particularly unhinged or traumatized. He seems to function pretty normally in social situations, just without speaking. It's also worth noting that silent protagonists were pretty common in games of that era. Technology and budget constraints often made it difficult to include fully voiced protagonists, especially in open world games with lots of dialogue options. So Claude's silence could simply be a product of its time. Rockstar Games, the developers of GTA, have never confirmed any backstory for Claude's silence. In fact, they've generally avoided giving much backstory to Claude at all, preferring to keep him as a blank slate for players to project onto. So, what's my verdict on this theory? While it's certainly creative and adds an interesting layer to Claude's character, I'm gonna have to say it's unlikely to be true. It feels like a bit of a stretch, trying to add a complex backstory to what's more likely a simple game design choice. In the end, whether Claude is mute due to trauma, a missing tongue, or just because the developers decided not to give him a voice, he remains one of gaming's most iconic silent protagonists. His actions spoke louder than words ever could, and that's what made him such a memorable character. So, what do you think? Does this theory hold up? Or is it just another wild speculation? Let me know in the comments. GTA 5 Michael Family Theory The theory suggests that Brad Snyder, Michael's former partner in crime, is actually the biological father of Michael's children, Jimmy and Tracy. So, the theory goes that Amanda, Michael's wife, had an affair with Brad before or during her marriage to Michael. The main points of evidence for this theory are, one, Jimmy and Tracy don't particularly resemble Michael. Two, Jimmy is overweight, which the theory suggests he inherited from Brad. Three, Tracy is blonde, assuming she doesn't dye her hair, which could come from Brad. Four, Amanda has a history of infidelity, as we see in GTA 5 now. Let's analyze this theory piece by piece. First off, it's true that Jimmy and Tracy don't look much like Michael. But hey, genetics can be weird sometimes. Not every kid is a carbon copy of their parents. Plus, we don't know much about Michael's extended family. Maybe Jimmy gets his build from Michael's side of the family, and Tracy's blonde hair could come from Amanda's genes. The idea that Jimmy's weight comes from Brad is a bit of a stretch. We only see Brad briefly in the game's prologue, and he doesn't appear to be particularly overweight. Jimmy's size could easily be explained by his lifestyle. We see him constantly eating junk food and playing video games. As for Tracy's blonde hair, that's not really strong evidence. Blonde hair is a pretty common trait, and as the theory itself admits, she could have dyed it. Many teens experiment with hair color. Now. Amanda's infidelity is a fact in GTA 5. We see her cheating on Michael with her tennis coach. But that doesn't necessarily mean she was unfaithful in the past, especially not with Brad. In fact, given how much Michael and Brad seem to dislike each other, it seems unlikely that Amanda would have had an affair with him. There's also the timeline to consider. Brad died during the failed heist in North Yankton, which happened when Jimmy and Tracy were young children. For this theory to work, Amanda would have had to maintain a long-term affair with Brad while Michael was completely oblivious. Moreover, Michael's devotion to his family, despite their dysfunction, is a key part of his character. The idea that neither Jimmy nor Tracy are his biological children would significantly change the dynamic of the story GTA 5 is telling. So, what's my verdict on this theory? I'm gonna have to say it's highly unlikely. While it's an interesting idea that adds some extra drama to the DeSanta family saga, there's just not enough evidence to support it. The proof provided is circumstantial at best and relies on a lot of assumptions. Will Luis Lopez return in GTA 6? So, the theory goes that Luis Lopez, the protagonist from GTA 4, 
the Ballad of Gay Tony, might make an appearance in GTA 6. First off, we've got the setting. GTA 6 is going to be set in Vice City, or at least a modern version of it. Now, at the end of the Ballad of Gay Tony, Lewis hints that he might be looking to leave Liberty City and make a name for himself somewhere else. Fans have connected these dots, and are speculating that somewhere else could very well be Vice City. Then there's the precedent. We've seen Rockstar bring back characters from previous games before. The most notable example is Johnny Klebitz from GTA 4, The Lost and Damned, who showed up in GTA 5. Sure, his appearance was brief and, well, let's say not exactly glamorous, but it shows that Rockstar isn't against the idea of character comebacks. Now, why could this actually happen? Well, there are a few reasons why it might make sense. First, Luis is a fan-favorite character. He's charismatic, complex, and his story in The Ballad of Gay Tony left a lot of players wanting more. Bringing him back could be a great way to generate buzz and excitement among longtime fans. Secondly, Luis's background as a nightclub manager could fit perfectly with Vice City's vibe. If GTA 6 leans into the glamorous, nightlife-heavy atmosphere that Vice City is known for, Luis would slot right in. Moreover, Luis's story ended with him in a position to potentially expand his influence. He had connections, experience in the criminal world, and ambition. It's not hard to imagine him trying to set up a new empire in Vice City. There's also the potential for interesting storylines. Luis could be a mentor figure to the new protagonist, or maybe a rival. Or perhaps he's moved on from his criminal past, and the new protagonist has to pull him back in for one last job. The possibilities are endless. Lastly, Rockstar loves to create a connected universe. We've seen references and callbacks to previous games throughout the series. Bringing back Luis would be a great way to further cement the idea that all these stories are happening in the same world. Now, it's important to remember that this is all speculation. Rockstar keeps their cards very close to their chest when it comes to new games, and we don't have any official confirmation about GTA 6's setting, let alone its characters. Also, while the Johnny Klebitz appearance sets a precedent, it's not exactly a pattern yet. We can assume Rockstar will bring back a character from the GTA 4 era in every new main series game. That said, the theory isn't completely out of left field, it's based on some solid reasoning, and it would be a pretty cool callback if it did happen. So, what do you think? Could we be seeing Luis tearing up the dance floors and streets of Vice City in GTA 6? Or is this theory just wishful thinking from fans eager for any GTA 6 info? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And we are done for this part. There will be more parts and more theories. So if you don't want to miss any of that, make sure to subscribe immediately, and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care, and have a nice day.